Hey, Miles, good to see you, man. Congratulations well, on everything. Hey, thank you. I just want to know, what, did it, what does it mean to you to have the Browns show the, the loyalty and the faith in you um, to get this extension done now? I mean, we had always talked about doing something like this, even for my first year, first year in the league, and they always had confidence in me and my abilities. And now that's just confirmation of that with them. Don't give me this this extension, and I know I'm, I'm just going to do my best to you know, make it worth it for them. But it'll you know, make my me and my friends, and my family proud. And I know we haven't spoken to you since the Pittsburgh game, and obviously you can't redo what happened at the end of that game. Does it bother you at all, Miles, that, that that's going to kind of hang over you for the rest of your career, regardless of what you do going forward, that that's always going to be part of your resume? I mean, my life is much bigger than one moment. You know, me, the Browns, and my teammates are going to look past that and you know, go on to, to great success, and that will just be a – a small bump in the road. All right, thank you, Tom. Our next question is going to be from Mary Kay. Mary Kay, I believe if you could unmute on your side, please. Thank you. Hey, Miles, I saw a, a quote from you. Uh, I think it was on, on ESPN where where you said you definitely have something to prove. You know, this year after you know whatever after what happened last year. So, what exactly is it that you feel that you have to prove? I mean, I feel like with some of the losses we had, I'm talking about with the our my teammates, you know, some of the guys who are out, you know, including myself, we had the chance to you know, make a run at the playoffs and uh you know, I had a chance to you know, solidify myself as you know, top two defensive players in the league and you know, hopefully not be considered number two. So I have that to to prove next year and you know, we gotta Got to show that you know this talent can come together and you know, win some games, win big games. Do you feel, uh, you know, an even more of a burning desire or a hunger to to come back and and show something after the events of last season? Absolutely. You no, know, you no. Know, everybody's wondering you know, how I got to where I'm at. You know, with the the extension and you know how he's doing and you know has he has been working out and slacking. You know what kind of mindset is he in coming back? And I just you know want to prove myself and know what I've been doing to to get ahead of the, the pack. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Our next question is from Nate Ulrich. Hey, Miles, congratulations. Uh, I wanted to ask you about you're coming back from a, a season ending suspension, obviously, that we're talking about. And a lot of people on the outside ask, after something that like that, you know, a big dose of adversity. Is he going to be the same player? Is he going to still have the passion for the game? Um, and then, obviously, this contract extension. When you're you're the highest uh, paid uh, non quarterback in NFL history, there there's you know a lot of expectations that come with that. So, how do you address those uh, questions? Um, what, what's your mentality about those aspects? If you're going to if you're going to be the same player coming back from suspension and how you're going to deal with the pressure uh, that comes with this uh, historic contract. I don't want to be the same player I was last year. I want to be better you know, in, in all aspects. And uh, I mean, even on that traje trajectory, I was you knowing the, the, the player of the year you know, conversation. And so I don't want to make it a, a conversation anymore. The next, this next year, I want to, you know, ball out win that award, but I want to take my team through the playoffs and, you know, even higher than that. But that it's all based on what we do as a team and you know, how we can uh, build chemistry with each other. I know it's kind of hard with with COVID and getting in the in the building. So we got to just work with what we got. Great. Marla Rittenauer, you're up. Congratulations, Miles. Um, I just, I know you said this is a small bump in the road, but how do you feel better equipped like mentally and to handle, you know, you're, there's going to be, you know, chiding from opponents and fans and that kind of thing. How do you feel like you're better capable of handling that kind of stuff now? I mean, that's just life. You have one mistake and you no know, people are going to come after you. So, and mine just happened to be on national TV with millions watching. Yes. 
how it be for me. So me, I'm just going to keep on playing my game. I'm not going to worry about what, what people say, what, what they do. You know, somebody comes at me, I walk away, put my hands up, whatever I do to, to notify the situation. But that again, it's just a, a bump in the road. And I know my teammates will have my back to, you know, de-escalate and, you know, keep it a, keep a straight to football. In the immediate aftermath, did you almost ask yourself, how did this happen? It's such a, you know, a, it doesn't seem like you, per, your personality to snap or whatever you would say you did. Um, did you have it, find it hard to come to grips with that? It was a reaction to a situation. Everybody's reaction is different to the stimuli that they're, that they're given. And I don't believe anything like that. Has happened before and it won't happen again. You know, just have to don't be ready for that. And, you know, now that I've had something like that happen, and it went the wrong way, it can only go right for me because now I'm prepared. Thank you, Marla. We'll go to Scott Patrick. Hey, Miles. I wanted to follow up on what one of the things Nate was asking you. Um, what's your reaction to being the highest paid defender in NFL history? Because now it's time to prove it. No, they have faith in me, and now I gotta you know, give them a reason to have that faith. And was it? Does the pressure come with that? I mean, we're talking about you past guys like Leo Mack and Aaron Donald. Um, obviously, they're defensive player of the years. Um, do you feel pressure to live up to that contract? I already felt I was in their league, and now, you know, now that they have you know, put that, I want to say burden but that uh that banner on me that I'm the highest paid and now I have to uh, assert myself as you no know, top dog and I feel like I'm I'm confident and you know, ready to do that thanks thank you Scott Dan Lobby hey Miles congratulations um you know you talk about working to get better have, have we seen the best of Miles Garrett on the field and if not what does that look like no I mean I feel like I can only get better and uh We'll see it next year. You know, can't talk it into existence. You know, just got to do it. And so, who, who we have on the D line, who we acquired, and the guys we have in the defensive meeting room for like the sky's the limit, not only for me, but for for everybody on there. Thanks. Zach Jackson, you're up. Miles, uh, have you been able to have close to a normal off season? In as far as training with, with all this stuff, not being in the facility, uh, things like that. Yeah, pretty, pretty similar. I, I was able to get a, a weight room installed into my, to my house. I have no room to run, room to do drills and, you know, work on bags, movement, hands. You know? So I've been, I've been doing pretty much everything I would be doing if I were in the building, except for, you know, sitting in classroom and meeting with guys personally. So, you know, training wise, I've, you know, just being able to to get ahead because you know, that's really changed for me. I'm just still working, still grinding, still still trying to condition myself for, for whenever the season starts. Thank you, Zach. We'll go to Jason Lloyd. Hey, Miles. You, you know the history here. You know it's been a tough go. Uh, you got oh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of reason to stay. But I'm just wondering why it was important you to commit to a city and a team that has struggled for so long, if there was any reservations about that? There was no reservation for me because, you know, I, I kind of like that the history is, you know, what it is because it will only make it so much sweeter when we turn this thing around and actually start winning big games, winning playoff games, and you know, finally get to that, that last one. So I'd like to be a part of that. I'd like to lead the pack for that. And so whenever we – where we do that, wherever it starts next year, or how many years it takes, you know, I want to leave leap into that that promised land. Thank you, Jason. Jake Trotter. Yeah, Miles, kind of following up off that, were you aware that it had been so long since a, a first round pick had signed a, a second contract in Cleveland? And then what, what does it mean to the team that you could be the first of several of these guys uh, going forward through 2026, which you're under contract now through? Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, Jake. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was, I, I said, uh, were you aware it had been so long since a first round pick in Cleveland had signed a second contract like you just did, 
And what does it mean to you to be the first of what could be several of those guys that are around your age going through 2026, which are now under contract through? I'd, I'd only seen that uh, statistic only this morning. So it was a kind of a surprise to me, but I feel like it's, uh, it's kind of a the turning around of you know, here in Cleveland. I know there's a lot of young talent all around all over the board with us. So I kind of feel like, you know, this is, you know, I'm kind of starting this thing off right and how we can do it, whether it's off the defense, you know, keeping these guys here with young talent, you know, allowing us to be good for a long time. Great. Mary Kay, we'll go back to you. Miles, do you feel in some ways, I mean, you got off to a start last year where you were getting fined and a few things happened early on and then the way that it ended. Do you feel like you have to, uh, you know, try to avoid a, a dirty player label? How do you show that you're not a dirty player and yet stay as aggressive as you are? I mean, I really think it's more media than anything that has placed that been on me because more than... More often than not, you know, the players that I've, I've played with and the guys that I know, that's that's not who they see. That's not who they've who who they've uh, experienced. So they they've never thought of me that way. And so I don't think I'll, I'll be worth walking on eggshells when I'm on the field. You know, rack my brain about not trying to be a dirty player because I've never been that. You know, the landing on the quarterback happens. And if, you know, that's that's just part of the game. You know, sometimes you, you can't. You know, turn to the side, but that's not that doesn't mean you're a dirty player. So me, I'm just gonna do my best to play within the rules and you know, play at the best of my ability. Does that does that really bother you that that you would be portrayed in that light? I mean, the media is gonna be, say whatever they want about me. I am I am what you say I am, but I'm just gonna play the game how I've, how I've always played, it. and that's it's not dirty. But you know, however it's seen, you know. I just, you know, I want the respect of my, my family and friends and, you know, some of my peers. I, I respect those around me who I've, who I've grown up with and who I've played with and who have uh, earned my respect. Other than that, they, whatever is said, that's, that goes by the wayside. Okay. Thank you. All right, Tom Withers. Hey, Miles, we're all trying to figure out whether or not there's going to be a training camp or a season. And I know that the, the league and the union have kind of gone back and forth. What are your concerns, um, particularly about obviously the virus and, and and things like that as we go forward? I just I know we've been talking NFL, PA, NFL. Uh, we've all collectively and have been talking, just trying to get you know, safe protocols in place for us to you know get in the building on time and be able to to have you know, a couple preseason games. We'll get it get it ramped up slowly for for people who didn't have as much access to facilities as as others who who were at home and weren't able to to get to you know, some spots where they can work out. So it's just for us, it's being as efficient and safe as possible. You know, we we want to to have you know larger groups in into the facility, but we don't want to make it where you know. Guys are coming, free agents are coming in, guys who are coming in who you know, come from other cities, other states, coming in one time. We want to we want to make sure that everybody's getting in, but they also have, you know, safe place to, to work, safe place to study, you know, shower, do whatever, whatever you need so that you you don't pass it on to your, your family, your loved ones, you know, people that you you, you go and visit, you know, whoever it is. I'd say it's more for of the people around us who, who aren't as fortunate than than us because I uh, feel like you know, most of us, you know, we're healthy young men. We'll be able to you know, shrug it off. And well, it, as we've seen, it's mostly asymptomatic for us, but we don't want to pass that to someone who it can affect and, you know, really put a uh, hurt on them. You just, I mean, you just mentioned so many layers that there are here. Once you start peeling it back, there's just so many things that can happen. What is your confidence level that you guys are going to be able to have a season? I think it can be done. I think it it would just have to be you know treated kind of delicately and you know, have to take it, each issue uh, very seriously seriously with each team. I know preseason will, will definitely be different. You no know, knowing as you know, 
not every team will have the same access as others and not every team will be able to bring as many you know, players in because you know, everybody has different you know, side facilities. But it's just about you know, trying to get everybody on a fair and level playing field so that when we get together, you know, no, nobody's at a disadvantage. Thanks, man. Thanks, Tom. We'll go to Scott Petrick. Hey, Miles, we saw or I saw some of the posts on social media after George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Um, how, how did you deal with everything that happened over the last couple of months? And were you able to help like you wanted? I know you put out there that you wanted to help pay for funerals and those kinds of things. Were you able to do what you wanted to do? I did. Uh, I did play, pay for uh, funerals. And uh, I, I mean, me, it was... The reason I reached out on social media to do that is because I wanted to get to the families. And uh, that was the best way to do it. That was the best way I could get to multiple people around a situation who could get to the people who needed it. And so you know, the work is not done. You know, there are still things I'm trying to do here in Cleveland and even back home in the DFW area to, to improve the situations of uh, the the people I've grown up with and people who I've uh, who I know are have been affected, even those who I who I haven't met and can't reach yet. So it's just you know making a making it better for the young women and children who are my age and and under who I want to to see get out of you know situations that you know, could turn them to you know violence or you know, keep this cycle perpetuated. You think the league needs to do more? Uh, I feel like they should have a bigger voice. You know, they, they have you know so many, so much access to resources. They they should you know be able to to speak up. I believe uh, Cap deserves an apology. And uh, now I, I know it's one thing to to stand bus beside us and behind us for, I well I should say stand behind us and supporting our efforts, but they should be standing beside us and. And what we're doing, seeing as you know, there's a lot of players, you know, big and small, in their stardom, you know, trying to do things for their their hometowns, for where they play, and just for areas that they know have been affected. And I feel like they should be, you know, right there beside us, trying to lead the charge. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. We'll go back to Nate Ulrich. Hey, Miles. Uh, Scott just touched on a topic I wanted to ask you about. Um, can you say um, which families you were able to help out and what what the response was? Which families I was able to help out? It was the – honestly, I'd, I'd have to look it up. I remember talking to both their families, but it was – the chef who was shot outside of his uh, his home, and uh, David McAtee, and he was chef shot outside of his home. He was he was cooking, and uh, you know, there was there was film of him you know going outside, but not really, you know, enough of the situation to know what was going on. But me, he was he was there with you no know, friends and family. He went outside to see what was going on, came back in, and was and was shot there. And you know, I was I was very you know, taken aback by something like that. And so I just really wanted to, to reach out and help where I could. You know, it wasn't, it was, it was kind of about those, those stories that, that reached me personally and, uh, you know, touched me on a, a, a deeper level. So uh, it was, they have Magatine, you know, it's a police chief as well. I wanted to, I wanted to reach out to him and, and pay for his funeral. And so those two, no, I, I know I have family who have been in the force. I have friends and family who have been in the force. I have friends and family who have been in the military. So I don't have anything against uh, people who serve or know what they're doing. I just believe there needs to be you no know, better regulation on you know those who who are choose who are put in that position of authority and who are told to enforce the law, but also you know protect us as citizens and. Uh, you know, David Dorn was a you know, great representation of that for many years. And 
I, I wanted to, you know, pay that back to his family, pay it forward. Thank you. Our next one's going to be from Marla Ridnour. Um, one quick thing uh, on the COVID front, how do you feel about the face mask thing? Have you seen that mock up and, uh, uh I have, and that's not going to do much. No, you got guys s swapping hands, uh, spitting, bleeding, coughing, sweating, you know, all over each other. You know, we're on piles. We're, I mean, there's, there's so many times where there's physical contact where, where you're just exchanging, you know, all kinds of, of uh, contagions or the, the, the ability to, to spread the, the virus. There's so many actions and possibilities for that to happen. It's just that face mask, it's, it has good intentions behind it, but it, it's not going to do it. It's not going to be the trick. And neither is, you know, shutting down jersey swapping. That's not going to be the answer either. And one more quick thing about the funerals you paid for. Do you, would you like to try to keep in touch with those families down the road? Absolutely. Uh, I know that, you know, this is, this is something that will be part of their, their family forever. And uh, now I just want to make sure that they're, they're good and they're taken care of. And uh, it's not just a one-off thing. I want to see them prosper and their families around them do the same. I think that, the chef you mentioned was in Louisville, but do you know the town where the police chief was? I do not. Not often. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mario. We'll take two more questions. We'll go to Tony Grossi and then PJ Ziegler. Tony Grossi, you're up. Hey, um, Mario, uh, the Browns season pretty much went down the tubes during your suspension. How do you think it would have been different if you hadn't been suspended? Oh, uh, I think the pass rush. Would have been a little bit better, and uh, I mean, I just think the defense would have been better. I think, you know, I, I make plays all over the field, and I feel like I've just been effective at of uh, changing the game plans and some of the offenses that uh, attacked us and uh, kept them from opening too much of their playbook, and that that hurts you before you even get on the field. And so, once you have to change what you do around one person, you have to respect those other tendencies see what they can do and those guys are, are ready to ball and uh one follow-up has there been any communication between you and mason rudolph or mike Tomlin? has there been any communication between me and mason rudolph or mike pouncey yeah during, uh, since the incident or mike tomlin oh i said mike pouncey sorry uh no um there's been no communication and I mean, I have no problem talking to those guys, but there's there just hasn't. And so until then, I'm just going to keep focus on the season and keep focus on training and getting prepared. I don't have any, have any ill intent towards either of them. And uh, I respect Mike Tomlin as a coach and you know, what he's done in the league is, has been uh, great for for the Steelers. And they, they've had success for a long time. And I hope Mason Rudolph – goes on to to have success I've, i have no no problem with him going forward so you know whatever happens happens we're able to you know to talk and we'll just you know deal with things as as grown men well, that, that's fine by me but you know, i'm just you know keep my eyes forward and you know, keep focused on the, the plan and the goal all right thank you tony our last questions from pj ziggler pj go ahead Hey Miles, uh, curious. Uh, first off, what would be your first big purchase after this uh, this contract that you signed? And second of all, with all these Zoom meetings you guys have had, and not and having a lack of uh, on field work, where do you feel this defense is at, especially under you know a new system? And do you feel like it, those uh, Zoom calls have been effective in terms of getting you guys ready for um, the twenty twenty season? Oh, uh, we took advantage of a couple of applications to, to quiz ourselves and to go over uh, our film and game plans. So it was, I feel like it was almost as good as sitting in the classroom, honestly, just, you know, you don't, you don't get to, to see your guys and, and have that personal connection as you would with someone you, you haven't been on the team with, but, you know, guys who you've, you've already been around, you know, it's, you're not really, you know, missing too much. And, uh, First big purchase, 
one for me, it would be a, a car. And uh, for my family, it'll be a, a home. I want to give my, my parents a home in, in Texas.